Peace be with you. A few months ago, I met a man who stopped going to the church. After listening to him for a while, I asked him, what motivated him to do that? His spontaneous answer was that he did not want to go to heaven. I was surprised to hear for the first time of someone who did not want to go to heaven. I asked him, why? He said, he was regular to the mass and all the religious practices. Eventually, he realized that the mass that he was participating did not give him thrill, real joy and happiness. The singing at the mass was dull. And the sermon that was preached did not have practical implications to life. We go through certain rituals without spirituality. If I go to heaven, the same story will continue. I will be condemned to sing holy, holy, all eternity. If this is the way life is going to be there, then I do not want to go to heaven. Dear friends, the man was right from human point of view. He and many of us do fail to see the divine presence in our lives. Hence, we become blind to the divine element present in our lives. Thereby, we become negative, dissatisfied, we criticize everyone else on earth. It is in this context that today's liturgy of the word becomes more meaningful and relevant. Jesus saw a man born blind. He immediately takes the spittle and the clay and anoints the blind man. As Saint Anselm says, the spittle is the divinity of Jesus and the clay the humanity of Jesus. The moment the divinity and the humanity came together, there was transformation in the blind man. He was not the same anymore. Even the people who knew him well failed to recognize him. They said, Is not the man who used to sit and beg? Others said, It is he. And some others said, No, but he is like him. The reaction of the Jews to the self-revelation of Jesus is negative, while it is positive to the man who was healed. If we willfully turn our backs to Jesus, the light, we will be in spiritual darkness, like the man who does not go to the church or the Jewish leaders who refuse to listen to Jesus. The moment we become aware of the divine presence, that Jesus the light, in our lives, we resemble him. The creation story in the book of Genesis certifies that God made them unto his image and likeness. Because to become aware of this fact, we are given the best gift, the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, Jesus comes into our lives, not in the form of a spittle and the clay, but his very self. Every day, we are renewed and strengthened at the Eucharist. Therefore, the Vatican Council II says, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our lives. St. Paul, in our second reading, reminds us that once we were in darkness, but now we are in light. Do we allow Jesus the light to touch our lives? If we allow Jesus to touch our lives, we will be in light. Let us live in light and transmit the same to others.
God bless you.